Next, I would like to go over with you the all-important California Car Buyers Bill of Rights contract cancellation options. California vehicle dealers must offer customers a contract cancellation option on certain used vehicles. If a buyer chooses to purchase a contract cancellation option, the buyer will have the right to cancel the purchase and receive a full refund, including amounts charged for sales tax. The specific requirements for returning the vehicle for a full refund must be shown on a separate agreement. The full refund must also include any uh, vehicle the buyer left with dealers as a down payment or a trade-in. The portion of the sales price refunded to the purchaser under a contract cancellation option that meets all the requirements in the car buyer's bill of rights is not subject to sales and use tax. This requirement applies only to sales of used vehicles with a purchase price of less than $40,000 sold for personal, family, or household use. It does not apply to the sale of motorcycles, off-road vehicles, or recreational vehicles. Vehicle dealers can charge their customer for the cancellation option up to a maximum defined by law. The maximum price of the option is based on the cash price of the vehicle. If the customer purchases this option, the price of this option is not uh, subject to sales and use tax. So right here, you're going to be able to see a graph that explains the pricing cancellation policy right there. So as you can see, uh, if the cash price of the vehicle is up to and including $5,000, the maximum amount a dealer can charge for the cancellation option would be $75. If the cash price of the vehicle is more than $5,000 up to and including $10,000, then the maximum amount a dealer can charge for that cancellation option would be $150. If the vehicle price is $10,000.01 up to and including $30,000, then the maximum amount a dealer can charge for cancellation option agreement would be $250. If the vehicle price is $30,001 but less than $40,000, then the maximum amount the dealer can charge for cancellation for the cancellation option agreement would be 1% of the purchase price. So you can see those right there. Now, also, a required documentation on uh, cancellation option agreements includes the names of the seller and the buyer, the description of the vehicle purchased, and <clears throat> the VIN number, the time period in which the buyer can cancel the purchase and return the vehicle also must be declared. The deadline cannot be before the dealer's close of business on the second day after the day the vehicle is delivered to the customer. For example, if the dealer delivers a car to a customer on Monday, the return deadline cannot be earlier than the dealer's close of business on the following Wednesday. The maximum number of miles the vehicle may be driven before it is returned to the customer must be clarified in the agreement, and the maximum may not be less than 250 miles. The buyer must pay any restocking fees if the buyer cancels, cancels the purchase price and the specific requirements for returning the vehicle for a refund. And as you hear, you will see on the next screen the restocking fees. So on this very next screen here, you will see how the restocking fees can actually work. So. Uh, the price of the vehicle is $5,000 or less. The maximum restocking fee would be $175. If the price of the vehicle was between five dollars and $10,000, the maximum restocking fee to be charged to the customer would be $350. And if the price of the vehicle is $10,000 or more, then the maximum restocking fee that can be charged to the customer would be $500. So, you know, if the when this happens, the buyer is going to have some responsibilities as well. So uh, the buyer's responsibility upon cancellation of a contract, they're going to have to provide the, the following if they choose to cancel the agreement. They're going to have to have a signed statement indicating that they've chosen to cancel the purchase of the vehicle. They're going to have to have any restocking fees specified in the contract cancellation option unless the cost the buyer pays for the contract cancellation option. So that price is actually taken off the charge. All documents originally provided to the buyer from the seller, including the vehicle purchase contract and the original contract cancellation option agreement that would have been in writing. All original vehicle title and registration documents must be returned, and the vehicle must be returned in the condition in which it was sold, except for normal wear and tear. Also, the vehicle must not have been driven beyond the maximum mileage limit stated in your cancellation agreement. If you have specific questions regarding the car buyer's bill of rights, you can call the CDTFA customer service. Once again, that phone number is 1-800-400-7115. Records.
It's important to maintain adequate records since the CDTFA representatives may examine your books, papers, records, or other documents to verify the accuracy of your tax returns or if no return is made to determine the amount of tax that is due. Failure to maintain accurate records is considered evidence of negligence or intent to evade tax and may result in penalties. Used car dealers records. Okay, a common means of record keeping is is in used car dealer records are car envelopes and inventory books. In all instances, the DMV issues report of sales used vehicle forms to the certified used car dealer. Dealers selling late model used vehicles will usually have flooring loans on purchases and sell on conditional sales contracts with recourse. Most used car dealers also use envelopes, which sometimes we call the car jacket, the deal jacket, maybe you call it the customer file. And rather than the customer folders used by new car dealers, we have our specific ones in the used industry. Dealers assign an inventory number normally to a resale vehicle with a car envelope prepared for the unit. And details of each purchase and sale are placed in the proper lines on the printed face of the envelope. All documentations of purchase, reconditioning, and sale are inserted into the envelope. It's necessary to record the various sources of purchase to account for all sold vehicles. Dealers receive cards from trade-ins on the sale of used vehicles, purchase for used cars from individuals, uh, other new and used dealers, wholesale, retail auctions. So we have a big source of inventory. Sources of revenue besides sales from the lot might include consignment sales of vehicles by individuals and dealers and sales at dealer auctions. The dealers reports of sale. So the only common record common to all used car dealers is the report of sale used vehicle form issued by the DMV. It's the responsibility of the used car dealer to retain all report of sale used vehicle forms, including copies of forms that have been returned to the DMV and those forms that have also been voided. So you want to keep a definite record of those as well. These forms must be used in some type of numerical sequence. So you have, want to have a good organizational setting. Preparation of the report of sale from requ uh, form requires paying license or transfer fees, and the payment may be made to the B made with the DMV form 247 uh, transmittal of registration application. And this form contains the report of sale number, the license number, the amount of the license fees paid. Under the sales and tax use law, you are required to keep adequate records that are going to show your gross receipts from your sales or leases of vehicles, whether you regard the receipts as taxable or non-taxable, all deductions allowed by law and claimed on your sales and your use tax returns. You're gonna to have to show the total purchase price of all the tangible personal property purchased for sale, consumption or lease. For example, vehicle purchase invoices or auction receipts. These records are gonna to need to include your normal books of accounts, all bills, receipts, invoices, repair orders, contracts or other documents of original entry that support the entries into your books of record. All schedules of working papers uh, used in conjunction with the preparation of your tax returns must be kept as well. So all DMV report of sale vehicle forms that have been issued to you must be kept into your records. You should keep record re uh, for at least four years unless the CDFA gives you specific written authorization to destroy them sooner. If you're being audited, retain all records that cover the audit period until the audit is complete, even if that means keeping them longer than four years. In addition, if you have a dispute with the CDTFA about how much tax you owe, it's important to retain the related records until that dispute is resolved. For instance, if you appeal the results of an audit or file a claim for a refund, keep your records while that matter is still pending. If you have a point of sale system that overwrites data after a period of time less than four years, you should transfer, maintain, and have available all data that would have been overwritten or otherwise removed from the system for the required time period. Also, I want to cover uh, tire sales with you real quick here. Sellers of new tires must register with the CD, TFA, and collect the California tire fee on every tire sold. The tire fee is $1.75 per tire, and you can keep one and a half percent of the fees you collect as reimbursement for your related costs. The fee itself is not taxable, but if you charge an amount higher than re the required fee, that is, that's an excess charge, and that is taxable. So for more information, you can always call the CDTFA Customer Service Center at 1-800-400-7115. Once again, that is 1-800-400-7115. Or you can call your local office that you are going to see here on the screen as well. So if you ever have questions, you can call that number, but here's your local based offices right here as well. So what you're gonna see here, uh, you can call that 
That statewide toll-free number, 800-400-7115. Uh, you can actually go to www.cdtfa.ca.gov for additional information. Uh, or you can call the local number, like what you're going to see right here. So uh, remember, these are really important resources for you here. Also, uh, uh, the state wants you to be aware they do give classes and seminars at local offices. So you can sign up also for what's called a tax bulletin, the tax information bulletin. Once again, that's at the main website at www.cdtfa.ca.gov. You can actually sign up for uh, these informational tax bulletins that will be automatically emailed to you whenever there are any type of tax law changes. So. Uh, if you ever have a dispute, you can also call the Taxpayer Rights Advocate at 916-324-2798. Once again, that's the Taxpayer Rights Advocate at 916-324-2798.